Welcome to Beyond the Riverwalk, the local weekly podcast that brings San Antonio's most remarkable people, places, and events directly to you. All links discussed will be in the show notes, so sit back, relax, and join Kevin and Melissa Barron as they ask the questions that you would. Now, let's get the conversation started. Well, welcome back, everyone, to Beyond the Riverwalk. This is Kevin, and joining me again is... His wife, Melissa. Yeah, she's always reminded me that. Yes. Uh, it's 25 years, people. 25 and going. Years. And going. But today, we have a great guest with us, someone who knows the South Side really well. Her name is April Monterosa, and she is on the line with us right now, I believe. April, are you there? Yes, good morning. Good morning. Well, welcome, welcome. Uh, we found you online through, I think it was either Twitter or Instagram, uh, but you're on all the different social platforms. And your main website is southsidesanantonio.com, but it also goes by live from the south side. So let's get started, I guess, with that. What is that and why did you build it? So Live from the South Side is a media outlet that shares all businesses and things to do in the South Side. Um, I was born and raised in the South Side of San Antonio. I currently reside there, and I'm very involved in the community, and I noticed that there wasn't much being shared from influencers and bloggers about my part of town. So I decided to create my own well, and that's the way to do it. I mean, you know, we found something like that a, a couple of years ago when we started the podcast, and uh, there wasn't much out there for new folks who didn't really know the city, and we were new, so we figured let's just try to start talking to people and push ourselves out to go meet people mm -hmm. and go places, and this feels like, you know, something that is, is really hot right now. On Southside, there's a lot going on. We've talked to several folks who have businesses down there. Uh, there are big events down there. And it's a lot more recently, but I guess for people who don't understand, where is Southside? I mean, it, obviously it's the south side of, of San Antonio, but is there any kind of geographic description that you could share with folks? Um, usually when people think of the south side of San Antonio, they think of the San Antonio Mission, they think of the river, uh, Mission River Reach, um, Brooks is in the south side, and there's a ton of growth in that area. So... That's real. The South Side is really where San Antonio begun. Yeah. So we have a lot of history in our part of town. So what do you think is is contributing? I'll just kind of jump in, I guess. What's contributing to the growth that we're seeing down there? Because Brooks, you know, when they did the base closures years ago, from what I understand, it, you know, it hit people pretty hard in all parts of the country, but especially here. Um, but since then, it seems like things have just kind of skyrocketed. There's tons of building going on. There's tons of restaurants opening up. Uh, what's spurring the, the growth south side? I honestly think it's people coming back to build in their own community. I think, um, I think it's, it's the kids of, of the people that have businesses there already are, are and have seen their families, you know, start from the ground up and have new ideas and, and are, are more creative and, and things like that, especially with technology now. And I think they're just investing in where they grew up. That's what I really think is, is, is uh, why the South Side is growing so much. I think it's just all the loyalty from the people that were raised in that area are coming back and they want it to be as successful as the North side. Yeah. How, how long have you been doing this? Cause it seems like the, the site is really well developed. There's a ton of information out there. You've got lists and I mean, every different category, but how long you've been doing it and what's that process been like? Well, um, I have been a travel lifestyle blogger professionally for about eight years uh, I did write a book uh, two years ago titled Shine Beautifully, shameless plug there. And, um, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> and um, I built up my, my following. My following is about a total of 43K. It's not huge, but it's not small. And my niche was small Texas towns. I, I, I love the country. I go fishing. I go hunting. I go do all this stuff. I'm a total Texas girl. So uh, sharing all that, uh, my influence grew, and that, that's what made me realize that um, there was a need to share things in my community. And about uh, three years ago, I approached the chamber, and 
I wanted to get more involved with the community and they were all for it. They have been, they're like a second family. They're, they're just so supportive. So I started sharing on my shine beautifully blog site. And I noticed that um, I started losing a bit of my Texas followers or my followers that were not from San Antonio. And um, I'm like, man, I'm here. I go, I guess I'm going to have to split this up. And I really didn't want to do that because it's a lot of work. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, so, um, so I did, I, I split it up and, uh, live from the South side was actually a hashtag that, uh, the chamber, the South San Antonio chamber used. So I borrowed it and they supported me every step of the way. And then I created SouthsideSanAntonio.com. So I have put so much work into it. I wanted to make sure it was crisp and clean and it was a, it's a community blog. It's not, you're not going to see me in it. You're not going to see my family. It's all about the South side. So I launched it actually in March and it has grown really fast. Oh, wow. So it's very new. Yeah. I didn't realize that. Oh, it's very new. Yeah. I know on, I think I believe on Facebook alone, uh, I think there's 2,400 followers and it just launched in March. Yeah, that's so pretty, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty. That's I mean, I've been doing this a long time, so I'm like, well, that's that's really fast. So, I'm very very proud of it. I'm very proud to share all the the unique uh, things happening in my community, and and it's it's nice to to be able to use my influence to share that. So I'm very very proud of this site, especially. Well, it looks really good. I mean, the, the way you've got it set up, and we've already signed up for your newsletter, by the way, so I'll plug everybody. Go to the go to the website. It's southsidesanantonio.com. Uh, you'll get a little drop down where you enter your email address so you get on the newsletter and you get updates, I'm sure, to the blog and, and everything else that's out there. But yes. the, you've got main categories that are like tourism and leisure, art and culture, and then the South SA Chamber. But the latest one, uh, or at least looks like the latest post, uh, it's from July 18th at the moment. We're recording this uh, in July. Is farmers markets in Southside San Antonio surrounding areas. So we're seeing, I mean, not just you know development of uh, retail and you know chain stuff, but uh, kind of a resurgence, I think, in family-owned businesses, um, in the whole idea of eating better, eating healthier. Uh, not just the junk food thing and farmers markets have for the last several years around the country have kind of gone crazy. Um, and they're doing the same thing here. It looks like. So mm -hmm. when you, when you find a category like that, what do you go through to, to be able to find all the different stuff you want to include? How do you do the research or are people sending you stuff now? People are actually starting to send me stuff now. Um, and of course I, I still do my research and make sure, you know, it's, it's stuff I really want to share and make sure it is local and all that good stuff. But um, Life from the South Side has grown so quickly that now people are just starting to send me stuff. Um, so I'm I'm really happy to share the mom and pop places, the farmers markets, things like that, because I know a lot of people, they go to the Pearl, they go to La Cantera, they go to Alamo Heights. And it's people from our community, from the South Side community, and I don't even think they realize that we have those gems here in your backyard, you know. So, and you're supporting your own community and your neighbors or your neighbors' families or whatever. So, um, that's that. I thought that was a really good one to share, so people can stay in the area and and shop, you know, from their own community. Yeah, same thing for the the other article that's, that's next to it at the moment. Uh, thirty three locally owned restaurants on Military Drive. Now that's pretty specific for folks that maybe don't know the area. But at the same time, when you look at it, you click on that one. I mean, the list is is pretty good and really diverse. I mean, there's tons of different stuff out there uh, that I wouldn't oh, yeah. have thought of. You know, <laughs> for sure. Well, Military Drive is the oldest or one of the oldest popular streets in the South Side. It's funny, um, a friend of mine literally drove me <laughs> from inside 90 to inside 37 to 81, and I literally jotted down every single local restaurant. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yes, because I wanted to make sure that, you know, I didn't have a chain on there or no one was missed. 
And a lot of these uh, restaurants on Military Drive, they've been around since I was a kid, and I'm I'm in my 40s. So, you know, it was it's cool to see them still up and running and still getting packed with families. And so that was a really fun, fun blog to write out. It sounds a lot like what the Alamo Foodie likes to do. Yeah, we were, <laughs> we were talking to Jennifer last week about, you know, finding new things and, you know, trying to just be exposed to new areas of town and everything else. I mean, this is pretty much a checklist, right? If you want to hit every type of food from burgers to, I mean, kebabs, I'm looking and you got Don Pedro's on there, uh, La Perla de Jalisco. I mean, there, there's tons of different stuff. Oh, yeah. There's even a Mediterranean restaurant on Military Drive. People yeah, probably uh, don't know that. Yeah, and, and a Vietnamese place. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that either. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. We need to go to Southside. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean, well, you let me know. You let me know when you want a tour. I will personally take you. In fact, Ooh. there's an actual itinerary that I created. I hosted a group of travel bloggers along with the South San Antonio Chamber a couple of months ago, and um, I created an actual South Side itinerary. It's actually on my Shine Beautifully travel site, which I just and, um, Facebooked. Uh, yeah, we're liked. gonna we're gonna <laughs> ch- we'll follow up on that one. That sounds like okay. a lot of fun. So, yes, it'll take you to the missions. It'll take you to um, Seersucker, Gin Distillery. It'll, you know, all those fun places, the Salt Cave at Brooks Embassy. It's a, it's literally a full itinerary with times and everything, food included. So definitely look at that. I was going to say, that sounds like an idea for just a kind of a meetup of folks to just kind of get together if, the, you know, people want to connect. I'm actually working on that. So I will definitely let you know yeah, about that. Yeah, that sounds good. Maybe we can invite our past guests. Yeah, that would be that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> oh man! Well, when you look, you've got events out there. You've got uh, obviously all the food and drinks, but you've also got nonprofits. So, uh, what are you trying to do there to to support nonprofits in the area? It's basically just supporting the the not not so much supporting the the mission of the nonprofit is to let people know that there are nonprofits from the area. Does that make sense? Yeah, that are operating there, they're based there, yes. focused on yes. services. Yeah. That is more my goal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. But again, it's kind of a clearinghouse of stuff that's going on south side. And you could find the you know, you could do a search and you can try to, you know, to use the word, I guess you can curate it yourself or you can go to something like this that has a collection of things with so many different mm-hmm. interests all in one place. So uh, how do, sure. how do you keep it diverse like that? How do you what what uh, how do you balance I guess what you think maybe the audience wants or the readers want with the things that you're personally interested in? I think my knowledge that I've gained from working with a lot of visitors bureaus and chambers of commerce in my travel on my travel site with I think everything I've learned from them it helps me with this site. So I I kind of think about hmm if I was traveling what would I want to see? If I had a family, where would I want to go? I, I kind of have to think outside the really big box here because it's not about me and my family and my needs and wants. It's about the community. So you will not see any politics on my site. Uh, everything is positive. I will not share any sad stories. Everything is fun, you know, family, and it's friendly. So that's, I think, how I've gotten to this point, just using all the knowledge that I've gained from from being in the blogger world, you know, for eight years. Yeah, definitely. Positivity sells. There's enough negativity in this world. We need to spread the love. <laughs> yeah. I, I agree. And, and my, my, my media site is not as huge as some of the others. I mean, the goal is to get it pretty big, and I think it will one day the rate it's going right now. And then with the support of the chamber, but um, yeah, that's, that's just my thing. I, I get all kinds of stories, sad stories, you know, politics, all kinds of stuff. And um, I'll share the good stuff politicians are doing. I even interviewed the mayor. I don't know if you saw that post, but I yeah, even asked I him what his favorite, uh, his favorite taqueria was in the South side. You know, <laughs> I kept it fun and friendly um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to share the good things that they're doing. I mean, of course, but I'm not going to, you know, post any negativity or any sad stories. Or, you're not going to ever see anything like that on my site. 
That's yeah. awesome. And luckily, luckily, I have a say so. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. So, <laughs> yeah. You know, that's part of the thing is like, you know, people say, well, why do, why do people start blogs or why do they do, you know, podcasts or whatever? Well, because they have something they, they want to do. They have a voice or they have something they want to share or things they learn or whatever. Uh, and they want to do it their way. And because the Internet is out there now and has been uh, such as this kind of freeing thing, it allows people to be creative in ways that, you know, 20 years ago, 10 years ago, I guess really they couldn't. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things I always like to talk to folks about when I get a chance, especially someone that, that has built a site like this, it's as comprehensive as yours. How do you balance getting all the information out there? Because you've got, I'm counting right now, like eight at least or more uh, different social media outlets and other things that you, you share things to. Uh, what's the logistics like, I guess, about making sure that the people that are interested in this can find you? Um, you kind of have to pay attention to your stats and your insights and what your audience is commenting on and what they're sharing and things like that. So I, I kind of go with that. Um, you know, of course, as you know, sometimes, you know, a post will be a total flop. And sometimes the one that you think no one's going to read that it's like got 150,000 <laughs> hits, you know? So exactly. I, I kind of go with my gut. I mean, I, I, like I said, I'm from the area. I, I know what my area likes because I'm here. I'm in it. I know a lot of other media outlets, they write about the South side and are they really in it? Who knows? But I actually live here. Yeah. So I know what my, my South side audience wants to read. And where, you know, where they're trying to find it. I mean, right now, the thing that we've had to learn in doing the podcast is that there's, you know, there are different audiences on different social media platforms. And, you know, I'm older. Melissa, I won't say, I'll, I'll whisper, Melissa's older too. Um, and Yes, I'm older by three years, but he turns the big 5-0 next month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm starting to be depressed about that. Well, I'm, I'm right behind y'all. I'm like <laughs> right behind y'all. <laughs> well, I mean, what we found, though, is like, you know, when you want to reach people that are a little bit older, maybe the 35 and up bracket, you're looking at Facebook. When you're looking to find people who are probably, you know, the millennial age or whatever, you're looking more at Instagram. When you're looking at younger even younger than that, I have no idea where they are. Uh, but you're trying to, you know, you're trying to reach different audiences with different types of information uh, yeah. because they all have an interest in it. They just maybe have a different take on it. So you, that's right. Yeah, I think what you're doing is great because you're hitting on a lot of different things. I mean, you're you've got an article in here about all the parks in the area uh, mm -hmm. and how that hits yeah. on you know the tourism as well. But just families, just get out and enjoy yourself, enjoy the city. That's right. And enjoy your community for sure. <laughs> well, what are some of the that's, things? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that that's my whole goal of, uh, of the site. It's just to have people in the South side stay in the South side, spend their money on South side businesses, visit our historical sites, our parks, you know, things like that. So I, I really hope that, uh, that, but that's what's happening to my readers when they read my, my content. That sounds a lot like where we used to live in Tennessee. We lived in a little town on the I-40 corridor, and we would go to mm -hmm. people in Jackson would go to Nashville or Memphis. But all the country, the, the smaller towns would come to Jackson. Yeah, you go, mm. so, you so go instead to of the supporting, next... you, we, we would go to the big, bigger cities and the smaller towns would come to the smaller city of Jackson. And a lot of it, I think, like you, you mentioned, is people just don't know what they have in their own backyard. And, yes. you know, it, they, they see what they see on TV or out on social media or whatever else, and they go there. Uh, and sometimes without a site like this, it's kind of hard to figure out what's around the corner because you don't have time just to go drive around. Uh, and smaller businesses, mom and pops, don't always have budgets to be able to promote themselves uh, or even a social media presence. I've been surprised sometimes when you find places that are great that have virtually nothing online. Um, and it's, oh, yeah. You know, it's but they need to have that if they're going to survive long term, you know. And I see that a lot in my South Side community. A lot of mom and pop places, you know, they were doing very well before social media was so big. And, you know, now with all these upcoming other businesses that are, you know, they have younger business owners or they're social media savvy, 
they're they're doing very well faster, and it's right. because of social media. And I think that's what a lot of older mom and pop business owners don't get, you know, um, because they've never had to depend on that or, or never utilize that. So that that's been a little bit of a struggle with explaining that to the mom and pop places. Because yeah, back but in the day, it was, oh, I'm sorry. I mean, so hopefully they 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 um you know, they, they get it. They, they realize that it's a great tool for your business or whatever you're doing, even the smallest craft type of vendor, you know, you, you need social media nowadays. Everybody's glued to their phone. That's just how it is. Yeah. And that's true. One of the things I noticed when we, we were looking at your site earlier, um, is that the, the desktop version, you know, is a, looks like a really well optimized desktop version. But when you pull it up on your phone, it's very mobile friendly and yes. some websites aren't, you know, so when you're looking nowadays, you know, most people are going to look at it as much as I hate to say it. You know, there was an old uh, video years ago that was just hilarious and it was telling people don't do vertical video. Uh, but unfortunately, <laughs> that is what everybody does now because everybody's on their phone and their phone is vertical. Mm -hmm. So you have mm -hmm. to have your site optimized for that, too. But, yeah, you've done a great job of that. So it is definitely friendly to take it on the road, Thank go visit you. places and and just keep on going down that itinerary. If you can, if you can use that one, for example. For sure. It, you know, it was a, it was a bit of a struggle keeping it as plain as it is. But I, I kept telling myself, OK, this is not for you. This is for your audience and my audience is from, you know, the millennial to 60 plus, you know, I, my insights show that. So I needed it to be very plain and simple. So everyone and anyone could understand it and, and, you know, move around it easily. So, so yeah. So thank you for that. No, definitely. <laughs> so, so what do you think are good? What are some of the trends, I guess, that you're seeing? What do you think are the trends that are going to be coming that not only you'll be covering, but that you're just seeing down South side nowadays? People are very big on the trails, um, you know, visiting, uh, mission reach confluence park. So I probably will start sharing more things in depth about the places that I've covered maybe the history about it or things like that. Um, the growth at Brooks, of course, people love reading about that. Um, sharing about the South San Antonio Chamber, how they can help your business. They've helped mine. They've helped many of my, you know, my other associates and, and friends and business friends. So things like that, um, you know, with school starting, I'll have some back to school stuff, maybe some specials I can throw out. And I also do giveaways. Um, you know, since other brands and businesses outside the South Side uh, reach out to me to do little concert giveaways and things like that, because they, they want the South Side community to venture out and do stuff downtown or the Pearl or, or AT&T Center. So I do a lot of things like that as well. So that's starting to, to grow a little bit, too. So you're, you and whoever reads will see more of that on Live from the South Side. Okay. Well, one of the things we were, we were going down, uh, it seems like a long time ago now, but I'm sure it wasn't, uh, to the barbacoa festival. Um, and when we, the line was like crazy. I mean, they did an amazing job promoting that thing. Uh, and it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Uh, but when we were noticing, we were driving down the road, uh, was hot wells. And I noticed you have an article on your site about hot wells. Um, uh, mm -hmm. What is what is that all about? That, that seems like something new. I've heard, I've had people ask me about it. I've not been able to explain a lot. It looks like an amazing historic place, but just as an example of what's being done down there, not only by the city but you know for the public. Uh, what can you tell us? I guess about that, for example. Well, it used to be like a bathhouse spa back in the day. Now they're probably um, let's see. I want to say about a month ago maybe less, there was an article that came out where they're trying to do something like that again. I believe uh, they want to create like a spa. I don't know if they meant like a, like an aromatherapy spa where you get massages or like a yeah. spa, like where you can get in the water. I wasn't sure. Oh. Um, <laughs> but they have all kinds of plans for that to kind of turn it into something that the city can actually enjoy. 
not just, you know, I mean, you can enjoy it by going there. Obviously it's beautiful, but I think they want to, they want to transform it into something like the way it was back in the day. Well, and the, the page, well, the page, the article you've got posted has tons of really great photos. Um, and then the thing that I like is at the bottom, it says of the article, it says things to do nearby. So you've got a list of restaurants nearby. So if you want to go, you don't have to, you know, you, you don't have to go around and try to find the local McDonald's. You can find the local places that are nearby that. And you've yeah. got nightlife and other attractions in the area. So you can kind of make a day out of it uh, and For not sure. just go there. So that's really thoughtful. Uh, it's a great way to present things. Thank you. And thanks for the compliment on the pictures. I take all my own pictures. Oh, that really, was going to be my question. Yeah, they're, <laughs> yes, they're, I do. they're really good. <laughs> yes, I do. You had a really overcast day, but they came out great. I mean, if you look you, at the You sky. know, it rained that day. And I was like, oh, no, my camera. But you know what? It was fine. It was fine. And the, the pictures did turn out okay, considering the weather was not great that day. Oh, yeah. No, they definitely did. So in terms of uh, things, I guess, what are what are some Southside secrets that maybe you can share with folks? Like what are some of your play, favorite, I can't even talk today. Her favorite play areas? What, uh, what I was going to say was <laughs> some of your favorite places to <laughs> go or maybe to, to grab lunch or something like that. What can you tell us of like, you know, what is it? Don't miss or yes. uh, what's the term? You're looking at the wrong person. I'm looking at you. That's the I, wrong that's <laughs> My oh favorite my places, if you look at my itinerary, which I need to move it to my south side site because it's on my travel yeah. site, um, the list is there. I love the Salt Cave at Brooks Embassy Suites. I love B&B Smokehouse. They make you feel like family when you just walk in. And, of course, the food is phenomenal. Um, I am a gin girl. Thankfully, there's a distillery in the south side, so it's your sucker gin distillery. Um I love visiting Confluence Park. It's absolutely beautiful, even on a rainy day. Oh, it's just, it's amazing. Um, and of course, all the missions and, and Espada Park, yeah. um, anywhere where the river's at, I, I like to be around. Well, I work with two folks that live down there, and we live kind of on the eastern side of town. Um, and there's just these great stories that they tell and, you know, of, of growing up there uh, and the development that they're seeing now. Um, and of course, you know, we usually hang out at the Pearl because it's kind of in between where we live and where I work, which is all the way Mm -hmm. other side of town. Um, but the interesting thing is that you're seeing some of these, you know, kind of, I'm old, so I'm going to use a term like hip and trendy places, I guess. Uh, Mm -hmm. like Southerly is building a, a restaurant and, uh, a brewery down south. Uh, yes. uh, there's there's places that you know people would say, oh, you got to go to Alamo Heights, or oh, you got to go to these you know more upscale, or at least people think about as upscale areas. Uh, but the growth is south side, and you could see it by where the businesses are heading. So, I think part of that is by people like you that are putting information out there, so they get the right information about the area. Uh, but also, I think through the partnership, like you're talking about being an ambassador for the chamber down there, for the Southside Chamber, yes. um, mm-hmm. letting them know that it's a great business environment, I'm assuming, because it, that's what it seems like, given the growth. For sure. For sure. Well, what else do you want to share with folks before we wrap it up? Anything new that you're planning for the site? Do you definitely need to move the itinerary? That will definitely will. will. I just looked at it. It looks awesome. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. move that over there um, for sure. But what else I is going will, I, well, and actually, so like I said, I, a few months, a couple of months ago, I hosted along with the South San Antonio Chamber some travel bloggers from out of town to come in and tour the South Side. So I'm actually working on that because they actually created their own posts each about their thoughts and opinions and their own oh, pictures good. and things like that from the from the tour. So um, coming up this week will be that that post sharing uh, the links to the travel bloggers that visited us. And then I'm going to include that itinerary. So for people that are from other parts of town and they want to come to the South side and they don't know what to do, they have a full itinerary they can follow. So that'll, that'll be on my site coming up. Awesome. Sounds like I, I, I see a weekend plan coming together. Yeah, that works for us. <laughs> and, and it's a full, it's a full three days. Like we did a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, from breakfast to, you know, I mean, you could totally do a staycation at Embassy Brooks. They have a free full breakfast buffet. They have the spa. They have the salt cave. You know, uh, Brooks is right there. The green line is right there. 
Um, and everything is just in the area. I mean, probably, I think the furthest place was maybe Searsucker, like 20 minutes away. That's not bad. Oh, no. Um, but yeah, everything is in the area and you could totally make a staycation out of it and tour the South Side. <laughs> well, one of the things that came to mind too, to me is like, you know, when you want to go somewhere, one of the biggest challenges in this town is finding somewhere to park. Uh, and <laughs> that's a whole lot less of a problem down South from what I've seen. Oh, <laughs> we don't have that problem. You know what? That's one thing about the South side. Um, as they say, everything is bigger in Texas, right? It's, it's, it's like the South side. So right. there, we always have parking. Yeah. There's always parking everywhere. There's parking at the mission. You know, the hotel got a parking lot. Like, yeah, you don't have to worry well, about paying meters or anything like that. <laughs> I doubt we're unique, but we've made decisions about where to go and whether we're going to go based on do we think we can find a place to park. Yes. And that kind of stinks. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, it kind of stinks because you want you want to do something. Uh, you want to find somewhere fun to go, but, uh, you know, that's a, a hampering thing. So Yeah, but then you got to get it up is. before the rooster crows. So. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any Anytime I have a meeting downtown or an event, I Uber. I don't even deal with parking. That's right. So yeah. I totally get it. I totally get it. Oh, man. Well, thank you for doing this. This is a great introduction for folks. Thank to... you for having me. No, no. I, I'm, I consider it to me, consider it an intro to what you got going on. And we're right. hoping that people will go and, and follow it on all the socials. So it's live from the South Side. And you can also find it at southsidesanantonio.com. You're on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and LinkedIn and everything else. Instagram. I'm, I'm, oh, Instagram. Yeah. Instagram. Everything. Well, uh, thank you so much for having me and helping me spread the word about my Southside San Antonio.com. You're welcome. And we're going to be in touch because we're going to hopefully we'll get a chance to meet you and come check out some yeah. of the places down there. That's Yes, like absolutely. Plan. Absolutely. In fact, um, I'll send you my link to awesome. the itinerary. So we'll make sure we post the itinerary on uh, the show notes and we'll share it with folks out there as well when we do it to uh, to distribute the episode. So All again, right. Sounds good. Yeah, thank you very much for being on. And everyone, thank you for listening to Beyond the Riverwalk. This is always a fun show to do. Yes. Uh, we're getting a little looser and enjoying it a little bit more because we've been nervous to do this. But uh, Melissa won't let me get nervous. She'll just pick on me constantly. No, I just look at you. Yeah, and that's <laughs> enough. So uh, anyway, thank you all for listening. Please, if you like the show, uh, go out and share it with folks. Uh, you know, share the post, share the episode itself, and be sure you subscribe because we've got lots of new episodes coming. Uh, our next episode after this one will be, I think, episode number 30. Uh, so wow. we're just kind of tooling down the highway on here and uh, in and around, I guess, 1604, <laughs> all around San Antonio. Uh, but uh, we'll be with you again soon. So until we talk to you, uh, we'll see you around the Alamo City. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Beyond the Riverwalk. Send your comments, questions, and suggestions to podcast at beyondriverwalk.com. As always, subscriptions to our show are free and available wherever you find podcasts, as well as on our website. Until next week, join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for more conversations about our community.